Annabelle the doll. Scam or possession? Let's dive on in. <laughs> Sparta and welcome to my channel. This is where we dive into the mysterious and unsolvable and try to learn through tarot and other divination tools what is going on. Well hello there my friends. It's always a pleasure to sit down with you and to share our thoughts and theories. I hope you are doing well. I today for the first time I'm not feeling as um brain fogged, nor, how should I put it, um, d d lethargic, like I'm dragging ass, I haven't felt that way today as much, and so this is a good sign, I gotta tell you, the COVID symptoms, it's awful, it is awful, <laughs> anyway, if you're new here, and you haven't subscribed before, please, subscribe and hit that notification bell. I post videos weekly and sometimes I'll throw in a bonus video or two. Uh, I plan on doing that this week. <laughs> so please also hit the thumbs up, comment down below your thoughts and ideas on today's topic and as well as post your suggestions for future videos. <laughs> now let's get into ooh, Annabelle the doll. Annabelle the doll is a Raggedy Ann doll that is believed to have been possessed by demon. This doll is was put into the occult museum of Ed and Lorraine Warren. Ed and Lorraine Warren have been accused of scamming people, exaggerating stories, and the paranormal. Ed is a self-pronounced demonologist. He learned himself, and unlike me, I went to school. But no, that doesn't make me better. You learn as you're, you do stuff, really. And Lorraine, she is like a medium. She um, has these divination gifts. She's a psychic, um, but they are they kind of do say call things differently because they're part of the Catholic Church. And so they, you know, if their possessions and exorcisms are to be done, they always ask for, you know, to get permission from the Vatican, which is so lame. I'm just, just got into that. If you want to know a little bit more of my thoughts on that, um, I did just post a trailer video, which is kind of an introduction of myself and who I am and how I got into paranormal and true crime and being psychic, you know, how these things manifested in my life. So, <laughs> um, this Annabelle doll, people have said, can kill, can harm, but is it really the doll? Is it really possessed? I have these questions. So, if you want to learn more about the story of who Annabelle is, and it's different from those movies that are out there, though I, I, yes, yes, I do enjoy good horror films a lot, and I do have watched them all. I own all the Annabelle movies, so yeah. But does that mean I believe it's possessed? No. We'll get into that in this next section. So, you know. I have those chapter links down below. So if you just want to skip on ahead and get into that psychic reading, go for it. No harm, no foul. I just want you to be able to enjoy this video. And if you want to learn more about Annabelle, this doll and my thoughts on it before the reading, continue reading on, listening on ahead. Now I know some people do the tarot reading and then do this part, whichever. It's up to you guys. Just thank you for being here and watching. Anyway, let's go. Hey, welcome back, my friends. Thank you for staying around. 
Let's get into a little bit more about Annabelle the doll. It's a Raggedy Ann doll. I love Raggedy Ann so much. I still have a soft spot. I had one and I called her when I was a little girl, uh, Yang Yang. And I still have Raggedy Ann dolls, but she's in storage. I need to get my dolls out of storage and into our home. I'm trying to come up with an idea how to display them. Uh, some family members are a little spooked out by dolls, so they were like, you, should, you gonna bring these dolls in? <laughs> yes, I collect porcelain dolls. And Barbie dolls, they're just dolls. When I had kids, <laughs> they all wanted to play with the dolls. So I ended up having to pack them away and then we were moved out of town. So my wife went to law school. So I left them in storage. And then when we moved back, we were in this tiny apartment and there was no place. And then we got in a house and I've had to wait a few years now. My kids are ages 10 and 15. I feel like it's safe that I could just bring them back in. I just got to figure out where I'm going to do that. Um, haunted dolls do fascinate me, although I've never seen one. I wonder if it's possible to, you know, I mean, it seems possible that a demonic spirit could attach themselves to an object. I, I have to wonder why they would want to, though. I mean, getting it attached to a person or just being around causing trouble and mayhem. I get, but hey, who am I to say what a demon wants to do or not? Okay. <laughs> On the other hand, if someone were to conjure up a demon and try to bind it to an object, yes, I do see that very possible. Now, as for spirits who have passed on, I can see them being attached to something that was theirs or what they wanted. Um, that, that just seems to make sense. So I suppose that yes, inanimate objects could have some kind of spirit attached to it. Now, there are several movies that have been made in the Conjuring series, and the movies use a porcelain doll that looks extra creepy. The films did take liberties in trying to explain how the doll became possessed. What is known is that a woman purchased a doll at a, a possibly a hobby shop, a thrift store, you hear different things, for her daughter, Donna, who was a nursing student. It was Donna's 26th birthday, and her mom gave her the doll as a gift. Now, I read where her name is actually Deidre, and it was the 28th birthday. This, there's just so many inconsistencies. So, I'm not sure which is, like, it. Now, Donna brought the doll home to a place she rented with her friend, Angie. And Angie was engaged to her fiancé, Lou, who was often around and stayed there, and... and and he claimed to have been scratched by whatever possessed the doll. When things seemed to escalate, Ed and Lorraine uh, Warren ended up stepping in and took in the doll. And the Warrens are known as uh, paranormal researchers. I mentioned a little bit earlier about one, you know, demonologists and a psychic and with the, working with the Catholic Church. That's them. <laughs> now they have... or or a museum where the doll was stored with other haunted or possessed items that they had collected. Now the museum is closed, sadly. Now when Donna brought home the doll, she put it on the sofa in the living room and the doll would appear to have moved or changed position a few times. And Donna and Angie noticed slight changes and then they started, the doll started to appear in different rooms. Now, Lou, who never liked the doll and felt that there was something wrong with it, claimed to have an encounter with the doll when he was there alone. Now, there's two different versions of what happened, what I can see here. But from all my research, oh boy, did I. One is, is that he took a nap and woke up and the doll was crawling on him and attacking him. Even trying to strangle him. The other is he heard noises in the bedroom where the doll was. And when he went to check, the doll was laying face down on the floor and he suddenly felt pain. He claimed that there were three scratch marks that later disappeared after a few days. There were a few other things that happened. Donna claimed that she would come home to find penciled messages written in childlike writing on parchment paper. I can tell you my 
writing looks pretty childlike, but yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, the messages, they read, help us. Help Lou, who was Angie's fiance, Donna's roommate, Angie. Um, interestingly enough, Donna claims that there's no parchment paper in her home and didn't know how the notes got there. Also, Donna claimed that blood did appear on this doll, like on his face, hands, it was on his body. Now, since things were escalating, Donna and Angie called in a medium. And this medium held a seance to learn more about this doll. And the medium had believed that the spirit attached to the doll was that of a young seven-year-old girl named Annabelle Higgins. The medium said her body had been found there before the apartments were built. She was supposedly lonely and wanted to be loved. Now, I've also heard that it was, Annabelle Higgins was an eight-year-old girl. There's just like, it, you know, varies. Now, this is one of those areas where it makes you, hmm? first off, the dead girl. Did anyone look up to verify she existed? Secondly, human spirits normally attach to things that had belonged to them. If the little girl had died where Donna was living, then that doll was probably not hers. Now, I could see a child spirit being drawn to children's toys, or if she had an, a, a Raggedy Ann doll, this would remind her of her doll. I could see that and would want to interact and um, be part, you know, with the doll. Apparently, Donna and Angie, they, she felt, they felt bad for who they thought was the spirit of a little girl and invited her to stay with them. And they were like, you know, we'll take care of you, love you, we're not going to abandon you. Now... I could see how a human spirit would become attached to something after something like that that hadn't belonged to them. Someone inviting them, you can. But I still struggle with the idea that the doll was haunted by a spirit of a girl who allegedly died and was buried where Donna and Angie were living. The doll was bought elsewhere and brought to the house. So was the doll possessed before or after it arrived? The seance doesn't match with what Donna, Angie, and Lou had been experiencing. Well, we're missing a piece of this puzzle, or could I just be overthinking things? Nah, I should get, pay, pay attention to all the little details. Mm -hmm. So I noticed that the incident where Lou was attacked by the doll had some inconsistencies. Some say it happened, and, that the, and then the medium was called. And others say it happened after the medium was called. Apparently, that attack or other things that happened made Donna and Angie seek out help from a priest. And this priest apparently felt the situation was severe and contacted the Warrens. You know, there's not a whole lot of detail. But yeah, that's, that's the story, folks. <laughs> Ed and Lorraine Warren went to see Donna and Angie and said that the doll was actually possessed by a demon. Then they took the doll with them to put in their museum. Now, they claim to have had brake problems on the way home with the doll in the back seat of their car. And then Ed poured holy water on the doll and the brakes started working again. Interesting. <laughs> the Warrens first put the doll in Ed Warren's office and it is said that the doll would levitate <laughs> and move about the house, even if in a locked room. And it would disappear for days and then reappear. So, <laughs> they end up creating a wood box with, and, with glass and to contain this doll in. And they had inscribed on the inside both the Lord's Prayer and St. Michael's Prayer. Supposedly, Ed would say a binding prayer from time to time over this, and it said that the doll never escaped and has remained in the box. There is a claim that Annabelle caused a near death and fatal and fatal accidents. Um, once a, a priest who was visiting Warren's museum picked up Annabelle and discounted her demonic abilities. 
Ed warned the priest about mocking Annabelle's demonic power, but the young priest laughed him off. On his way home, the priest was involved in a near fatal crash that was that he that totaled his new car. Yeah, that's you know, it could be coincidental or you know, sometimes you say something and you could speak it into being. So, you know, without realizing Ed was speaking that there's gonna be a problem for the priest because he's not believing the story. That is that could have happened, folks. You are the power of our words is intense. That's why they say, say good things, say positive affirmations. Um, also to be more positive. And when you want to manifest things, you say, I want this and you can manifest stuff to happen. And so, yeah. Okay. So, but there's another incident. Oh, and this guy though, the priest, he claims to have seen Annabelle in his rear view mirror just before the accident. Now, this could just be, you know, he was spooked already about the doll and what Ed Warren had warned him. So, you know, we're not, we're not quite sure, but it could have happened. But why would she be in the back? I would have been like right in his face like, ha ha, this is dying. just kidding. Years later, another visitor rapped on the glass of the Annabelle's doll case and laughed at how still people were to believe in her. And on his way home, he re reportedly lost control of his motorcycle and crashed headlong into a tree. He was killed instantly, and his girlfriend just barely survived. Now, she claimed that at the time of the accident, the couple had been laughing about the Annabelle doll. Now, some of these stories, I'm like, how do you verify that these people have said these things? I mean, I just, I don't know, folks. <laughs> the museum that Annabelle was being displayed is now closed. There's movies about this doll, which have strayed from the original story about the doll. So is this doll possessed by something, or was this all an elaborate scam? Let's get into that tarot reading now. Welcome back, and we're going to dive into the tarot reading now. I'm pretty excited about this, because I, I want to know, you know, what we're going to find out. Was this all a scam, or did, you know, the Warrens exaggerate things? They thought they could, you know, add a little spice to the story. You never know. I've done other things where... The um, hauntings like of Amityville House where the Warrens were involved with that. And uh, yeah, that that was creepy. And I, I would say that the Warrens weren't really scamming anybody with that one, it, even though people thought it was. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> that one scares me. So, but this time I'm kind of, you know, because when I see the picture of Annabelle, maybe it's because this was a child um, one of my, it's from a childhood memory of how much I loved my Annabelle doll. That, you know, I can't see her being evil. <laughs> you know, I just, I can't. She was just like, it's Yang Yang. That's what I used to call her. Yang Yang. So, <laughs> anyway, let's get into the tarot reading. I'm playing, I'm thinking of also using the pendulum, depending on how this reading goes with the cards. See if we need to clarify, verify some things, you know. Well, here we go. Oh, boy. Okay, so we're starting out here with the Nine of Swords. You see this? Okay. I see here. Oops, put down. It's right side up. I'm just... Oh, this does not turn looking so good for it being a legit... This is... I'm saying... Planning secret things. Secret plan, but what? Um, Let's see here. Uh -huh. 
Queen of Pentacles reversed. I am hmm. Oh yes, if you're wondering why I have this headset on is because I am listening to music while I'm doing the reading. It really helps me focus. I will link down below uh, the person I'm listening to right now. <laughs> His name is Don DeVore. He's a friend of mine from Second Life. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. This, this worries me because it's like, I'm seeing conflict. Money involved. There's like something secret, some kind of planning. Uh, money involved, but it's not going well. Let's see here. Huh. Whoa. All oh, my cards flew out at me just as I had a thought. Just as I start seeing something. Okay, this card jumped out. The Six of Cups, mother, daughter. Um, passing down. Innocence, childhood, dream, God, money. So, Somebody was trying to make some money off of the story. That's clear here. With bad intention. Doesn't mean the story wasn't real. It just, you know, motivated them to talk about it. Okay, okay we got the two pinnacles. And they are reverse, folks. So... This is underneath planning, a secret plan that they didn't do so well in planning with someone else. There's two people involved. They saw this. People were concerned. Okay. And um, this is judgment reversed. Um, over the money, there's a, this questioning, not able to believe in self. <sighs> Ignoring the truth. Yeah, ignoring the truth. Seven of Swords. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The Seven of Swords is one of those that just like, makes me cringe. It's betrayal. It's deception. This is um getting away with something very dishonorable. So, and this was here. This card was representing for me. I saw as the doll being this innocent thing and being there's a betrayal of people making plans to make money off of the doll. I think someone knew it. Maybe the story wasn't completely truthful, but didn't care. And a bunch of cards flew out. So let's try this again. Huh. And then we have the last, this card, which is the last of the um, Arcana, main Arcana, and this is the world. So, 
Whatever they were planning, it worked. This this broken plan of betrayal and lies and deceit worked. <laughs> I am seeing Angie and Donna as the ones lying about this doll. And it spiraled. It's like they were able to convince other people because they kept speaking about it. It was an opportunity for money. I wonder if they got money out of any of this stuff. I wonder if they thought they would. But it didn't happen. <laughs> so. Uh, yep. There had been some money transaction. Yeah. <laughs> the moon reversed. Hmm. telling you this is about confusion I think they started I think they were I think there was like them making jokes about this doll okay and Lou was involved what if it's haunted this is creepy what are you doing with this doll you know you don't know where it came from and spoke, there was like this, oh, what if this doll did this? What if this? And I think one of the people were actually fooling with the doll and lying about it, okay? I don't think they thought it was going to escalate in the manner that it did. And I think this is... <laughs> Something did end up attaching itself to the doll because it was pretty much invited. Um, by creating this story, they invited something in. Here's the Nine of Wands. Um, yeah. This is, things did not go as well. I need to get, this is too much. Um, you know, we gotta, the, the, this, we gotta stand up to this. Well, how did this happen? This doll is freaking me out now. I'm scared. Will anyone believe us? Here's the three of cups. <laughs> See, I told you, Angie, Lou, and Donna. Um. They collaborated and created the story to sell. And um, the priest, I think he just kind of fell for things because he just sensed something was really bad and he wanted to believe these kids. So here I have the um, zip page of Pentacles. And it didn't go as what well they had hoped for. They had hoped that someone would want to buy the doll and, you know, make some money out of it. But I don't see that's how it worked out. Hmm. The Nine of Cups. This is Ed. I'm seeing Ed here. Um, he wanted to make it all come true. He wanted to make sure that the story was true. Um, now the queen of wands is here and this is Lorraine. She was very passionate about finding things. She was sensing something was off. Ed wanted to keep pushing it. 
so that it would come to a fruitation. I think Ed knew very well that you believe in something enough and you push it to happen, it's going to come true. And I think that's that's kind of what's happened. Um, then we have the Queen of Cups. I was just thinking of the psychic medium. And the Queen of Cups popped up. What did she think? Did she really tell a story of a girl? Um... Here. Hmm. The Emperor reversed that. Mm. Why would she do? This uh, medium wasn't real focused. She couldn't sense anything, so she decided to take a chance <laughs> and was like, okay, I'll give them the story. And yeah, because they couldn't, I don't think they sensed anything, folks. I don't think they were like, this is all pure. This is all innocent. Let's, um, with the. But, hey, I think I'll just go along with the story. And then we have the Two of Swords. The conflicting, this is conflicting stories here. Um, she made a bad decision. She, she made a decision and she went with it. So they got, and, but because they, oh my gosh. Because they had spoken into it being haunted and doing evil things. The doll was like, what? You know, whatever's attached to the doll is like, I ain't some little girl here. I'm going to make it known. I see it leaving. Just like, I think when, with the Warrens, it just kind of said, Screw this and left. <laughs> Seven of Wands. Um, reversed. <laughs> this is giving up. <laughs> Fuck this. I'm out of here. Like I told you. <laughs> Dude, it's like I came here. Kids, they were all being, you know, worried. And so I thought I'd have fun, you know, screwing with them. No, I am stuck in the, the, you know, they put the doll in this case. I got to go find something else to do now. Goodbye. Really? I thought... I, I, <laughs> the Four of Swords. This, <laughs> this is not what I expected. But hey. <laughs> um, this is meditating, resting. I think... The story was put to rest. I think. I'm telling you folks. I know I'm laughing and I'm kind of amused. Even though, you know, I'm talking to demons here. And yeah, but. I just, this is like a mischievous demon. And it's like, I'm being accused of things, but that's cool with me. I don't mind. If people that you know they're gonna make up these stories, it just makes me look badass, you know. Huh? <laughs> you know, you was kind of lazy and just enjoying <laughs> the stupidity of humans. That's what I'm seeing here. Um, I'm gonna pull out my Letterman deck because I just I'm getting just there's such a mockery. It's this demon was just having so much fun. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I got 30. 
and this is the lilies you see the little tiny lilies here folks okay and it's usually like peace and okay let's see what happens okay and then we have some mice the mice here and that's 23 in the Lanterman deck. <laughs> it's like this doll was pure and innocent and peaceful, but then it got corrupted. 42. I believe that's the compass. I have a hard time reading some of the stuff. Um, you need to stop and just look at what, how it happened, what happened, and how something manifested. All pretty crazy. Here's the masks, two faced. Uh huh. Everything is not quite what it seems. Everyone thought this was some, some malevolent demon has, was trying to possess somebody. And it's like, I wouldn't, if I wanted to, I would have attached myself to a person. The demons could do that, <laughs> get themselves attached, and then try and get permission to be possessed. And that's, that happens. But um, he, was, he was having fun messing with the doll. Um, I think it was a spirit that had been around the, house, the home, you know, where they were staying. And yeah. This is about a couple gossiping and it being wrong, telling wrong tales. Ed and Lorraine. I think Ed and Lorraine didn't really understand the scope of the story. They might have felt that there was some lying, but they kept feeling that, that demonicness. So I think that caused a lot of confusion. Because here's 15. Um, this is so they, it was more of they thought I made a choice of business decision to make the money and this is the you know look back at how this all folds out yeah 24 this is um the storks here this is a heart um that's a couple who are in love um could have could there's two couples here let's see here oh 11 This is abusiveness, punishment, um, controlling. I think Ed might not have been the nice person that everyone sees. I think he, he would push things so far it was draining and he, he has such charm you just keep go along with it Eighteen, yeah she was loyal to him there's the dog 18 she um that's her first love this is a different age where people would Say so that you would trust him, even if it was giving bad information or exaggerating things. She trusted him enough and thought, really thought that it was okay. Um, she didn't see herself as being used or abused, but she was. There was a lot of manipulation. There's the lady, 29. And it's over the innocence and the couple, the two-faced, the love. She... Oh, she... One. And this is... Huh. 
She was a messenger. She got, she saw things, definitely, and gave the information. And then we have the scythe. Um, but sometimes it caused more damage. More harm. But what they did, it's like, so these people who were having a hard time and they would come in and help, I, I think it was not, the intention for Lorraine was different from War Ed's and that conflict of interest didn't allow the people to actually heal. Ed came across as someone who could be so like caring and um, compassionate, but he was very calculating is what I'm seeing. I really don't know a whole lot more about Ed and, and Lorraine Warren. I've never, but you know, I think I think um, I, what, I, uh, what I'm seeing is they ha had all these different cases and Lorraine is very gifted and took advantage of her gift. I really do see how, you know, he took advantage and was able to try and make money and would exaggerate things to, to, to tell to, just a storyteller, you know, and didn't think it was any harm in doing so. But, you know, it ended up making some people, like, resent what they, you know, working with the Warrens and feeling betrayed and um, feeling like they're a mockery. Some of these families, I just, yeah. Hmm. So, this, nothing super spooky. It's just kids who had a funny story, you know, fantasy here about a doll and manifested it to come true. And then the demon was like, hey, this is fun. I'm going to play along. Yada, yada, yada. Right. And then he was like, I'm out of here. You ain't going to box me up. <laughs> That's what happened. Allegedly. And for entertainment purposes only. I, I, I've got to remember to put that in there. So, but yeah, I'm curious, you know, I'm not going to say Ed and Lorraine were scamming anybody, but I will say the kids, this wasn't really a scam. They thought they were going to do something cool and make money when they started seeing things happening because of the stories that they started telling and manifested it to happen. So I don't think anyone realized what, you know, the, the core of how it happened so, yeah. But I do think there's been some little exaggerations. Try and spookify people, you know? <laughs> I think that's interesting. So, yeah. Lesson learned here is be careful what you say. Be careful. Just speak in the place. You can speak in being sick. Be careful. Words are a powerful tool. Definitely. So, folks, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the like button. Comment down below. Tell me what your thoughts are in this reading and about this doll, Annabelle. Also, tell me what other things you want you see me do in your readings. Um, yeah, I'm not using the pendulum. I don't think there's any reason to. I think this, this, this is like stories there. Interesting. Okay. I love you guys. Please remember, be kind to others. Be kind to yourself. All right. I love you. Bye.